Hey, this is Greg. And Liam. And we are from the Dillinger Escape Plan. And you're watching the Kerrang! Podcast. Greg, uh, Liam, Dillinger Escape Plan. We prefer to be called Bangers and Mash. Bangers and Mash? Yes. Yeah. From uh, <laughs> Dillinger Escape Plan. Uh, you Meat and potatoes. Th- yeah. If you're of the American variety. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you join us in London tonight. It's... Uh, Towards the end of the UK tour. It is. The whole European trek been. Epic. Uh, it's been pretty rad. We're, uh, you know, we hit some places like Bratislava and uh, what was the other place we've never been to? Uh, uh, in, in Spain, Bilbao. Oh, Bilbao. Yes. And uh, we have yet to go to Greece and Israel and uh, Russia for the second time and the other two the first time. So we're pretty psyched about it. Yeah. It's been really good. Yeah, it's certainly the best UK uh, run we've ever done, so thanks. It feels guys. weird to all of a sudden be like, oh, wait, we have like seven shows left. Yeah. Because yeah. we've been here forever. I don't want to go home. Don't make me go home. Make me go. <laughs> so, um, how much planning does it take for an American band to play like Tel Aviv? <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's Ten really. Years. It takes, yeah. <laughs> that's about how long we've been trying to make it happen. It really is. Not, I'm not going to say a pain in the ass because it's a blessing that we, we are able to even go. But um, it's a logistical nightmare to play places like that. Just because, first of all, you have no idea whether the show is going to be a, a success. It's extremely expensive to figure out. It's, it's literally one of those shows where you fly in, play one show, and fly out. So it's very expensive to do. Um, and it's certainly not a tourist mission here because we operate our, our tours really are on a shoestring budget where it's like we literally you know make it or break it based on a couple shows if we had a show like that that was a complete bomb it would uh, it would it would crush our entire, yeah. our entire we had, tour we had a show in France get cancelled and we found out via the promoters MySpace page so uh, that was that was kind of like one of those like oh Shit, you know, yeah. like, uh, are we gonna be able to, you know, continue this? And we ended up booking another kind of uh, punk style show yeah. that kept us all afloat. You know? But like, you know, something like that were to happen in Israel after we've already got ten people's plane tickets booked. You know, those kind of things are scary. But it seems like the right time. I mean, there's a Facebook page just dedicated to us coming to Israel where there's like a few hundred people. I can't read it. It's all in, uh, you know, Hebrew. Yeah, you I hope it's. But good. I'm psyched about it. You know, Greece too, another place where we've never played that we're extremely excited about. So. Awesome. Um, so how have uh, Cancer Bats and the Ocean been on the European leg? Good times. No, I mean, the, the Ocean are, uh, they're just solid. They're, like, really kind of easy to deal with dudes for the most part. And, uh, you know, a, kind of a different vibe, you know, than, than a lot of the openers we've had in the past, maybe. But, uh, and then Cancer Bats are just, like, almost the, you know, not the opposite, but just, like, a, you know, a more punk, hardcore vibe that, uh, you know, it kind of seems like the show like ramps up. Yeah, and now that we're in the UK, we've got Rolo Tomasi, who is a you know UK born and raised man, so that's exciting. Yeah, they're and definitely uh, stirring the silk. That's cool. Yeah. So the ocean had a uh, run a bad look in Spain. Uh, yeah. One of the worst things I've ever heard happen. Yeah. 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 So could you tell us what happened? Uh, apparently, uh, 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 you know, a fake police officer pulled them over. And, uh, you know, with full uh, badge and badge and like, you know, costume. It wasn't even Halloween and uh, held him up for basically it was a stick up, stuck him up for five grand or five thousand euros, which is, you know, to us is like ten million dollars because, you know, our dollars like a you know, peso. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they they ended up paying because they didn't know what to do. And uh, I mean, that's just an extraordinary amount of money it was for a touring an, band. There was also an issue in Prague where somebody got pulled over and arrested overnight. For like you know something really stupid, if not even you know total BS. Yeah. So yeah, they've been having a rough tour to say It's the unfortunate. Least. Like, so seeing those dudes get up and just like try to kill it every night is kind of like you know what I. It really makes me respect yeah, them yeah. because they within you know obviously the first day they every every financial concern they had all hit at once and of course they were like I don't know if we're gonna finish yeah. the tour we might drop off I don't know if this is something we can even do anymore and then uh, they sacked up and and the next day they were like you know you know what we're gonna play we'll all the out. all the dates we'll figure it out you know and uh, that to me you know was when I really was just like all right cool you know yeah. this is like that's the shittiest thing I've ever heard of and these guys took it and you know and they've been they've been around for a while and have been going you know going through a lot similar lineup change issues like our bands had so uh it's cool to see them you know like you said just kind of like put the big boy pants on and keep going yeah yeah, yeah. that's brilliant so after this tour what's the plans for Dylan? Are you going to start writing new material for the next album or you got lots of new dates coming up uh i mean i think all of us are just kind of looking forward to a little bit of r and r you know and and just kind of getting rock and roll? It, yeah okay. more rock and roll uh and kind of getting into a you know, relaxing enough to get in the mood to write, you know. Um, 
we have some other, you know, early, I guess late winter, early spring touring plans in the States. We're about 60% of the way through the record cycle, I think, that we figured out. And uh, we've got places that we haven't been to yet that we need to go, like Mexico, Japan, New Zealand, uh, probably South America. And then we have, uh, we are definitely going to do another North American tour sometime in the early spring. But uh, we have a weird three-month break that we're going to take right now that we're not really quite sure what to do with. So we've talked, we've kicked around the idea of recording an EP, you know, of, uh, you know, trying to fit in some of those other places that don't take so long, like Japan and things like that. But uh, for the most part, I think we're going to use it almost as like a pit stop to, to recharge. That way we can really put our head down and blast through the remaining 40% of the tour cycle before we can, before we, before we start cranking out, you know, new songs. Yeah. Um, since the uh, release of Option Paralysis, have you seen a kind of, a, a kind of upturn in the band's kind of popularity in uh, Europe? Yeah, which is really, uh, I, I didn't expect it. Uh, and when you've been around, not that we've, we're ancient, but we've been around long enough that I feel, and we've never really experienced a surge. It's always been a slow climb, but it almost feels like this time was the tipping point. You know, you just keep adding really, a little bit of people. It kind of hit puberty or something. Yeah, there's something <laughs> about this particular time, particularly in the UK, where it really feels like we, we went to some other, you know, we're on a different floor of the building or something like that. And I didn't expect that to happen because there really was not that much different we did this you know we wrote a record that we were super proud of you know we uh we we came and went on tour for it with it and you know we did the same amount of press we, we, we've really just been consistent about how we do things and we've we, we didn't do a support tour or do anything out of the ordinary so uh it, it's just a matter where i think maybe this is the, the amount of people reached a certain point where it seems like oh we made and some of it is just increasing room sizes you know like things like that being like oh last time we played here we that's five times we played this city. We played a, a room that held 500 people, and uh, now we're in a room that holds 700 people, and it's like things like that, you know. Where, it, but yeah, it definitely seems. I concur. <laughs> so, uh, for me, I think it's the beard, yeah. personally. I think yeah. it's kind of filled out quite like, you know, not I don't know if there's more hair. people in the room, but I think the beard just takes up so much space <laughs> that you, a few you think, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Few, there's a whole guest in, list. They're like tickets. I'm you don't like, need to put them on the guest list. Yeah, they just hang out in the beer and start stage diving out of it. Middle That's of how show. you got up here. I mean, they, were, yeah. they, they weren't letting you up. I'm like, I'll escort you in the beer. It's like that scene in Family Guy with the birds uh, coming out of Peter's beard. Exactly. Yeah. Um, tonight, for me personally, is the 22nd anniversary when I bought And Justice for All. And uh, we all know that's a, a personal favorite. Oh, yeah. It almost brought a tear to my Absolutely. eye when you even said the word, honestly. Yeah. I can still smell that, like, new cassette tape smell. Oh, I, I love that smell. Unfolding the lyrics, the pushead art. Yeah. It's so good. Excellent. So, uh, what, what three tracks would you recommend that, you know... Dyer's Eve, Short of Straw, Harvest of Sorrow. <laughs> Blackened. There's four. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and, and I, I would say maybe uh, one... Get started. Um, you know, <laughs> it's really tough to... I mean, that's... the other four? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I played that record so much that within a year, the writing, there was no writing on the cassette tape, and it was just black on both sides, and I had to put it in just to tell what side it was, because I couldn't even tell from looking at it. was like foreshadowing for the black album. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, to, to this day, man, that record, you know, has, that was like the turning point in my in my listening youth, where I, it went from just being rock to like some sort of darker metal tint you know and I, I really see that as being a you know i've talked about it a lot in other interviews but that was a definitely a pivotal moment that was I, when i saw the one video i was like all right that's what i want to do with my life yeah yeah. i want to head bang in a that's basement like, yeah. with <laughs> my friends or be an amputee yeah. <laughs> jesus yeah i want to go to war yeah <laughs>